Shalom, 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 and welcome to today's study on the armor of God. In studying the armor of God and our need to stand firm, we need to remember that each armor does not only represent our actions or our attitude which we practice daily, but also how Satan attacks us. Our main passage should be taken from Ephesians 6, from verse 10 to 18. If we read Ephesians 6, 12, the scripture makes us to understand that our battle is spiritual, right? Therefore, physical weapons will not effectively overcome our enemies. And also, in this passage in Ephesians 6, we, we are made to understand that if we follow the instructions diligently, then we will be able to overcome our enemies and stand firm. Praise God. Without any further delay, let's commit these Bible studies into the hands of God. Let's pray. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Yahweh, we worship you and glorify your holy name because you are the almighty God. You are the King of kings, you are the Lord of lords, you are the Alpha and Omega, you are the beginning and end. We thank you, Adonai, King of God, because in agreement to your word, you said, when we seek you, Lord God, Father, King of Glory, we shall find you. We thank you, Adonai, King of Glory, because you are a God who gives knowledge, O Lord God, to your children. You give wisdom unto us as well, Lord God, we bless your holy name. King of Glory, whatsoever sins you have committed, that will block our communication with you, Yahweh, please forgive us all of our sins through the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Please uproot, O Lord God, everything you've not planted in our hearts, and we refuse to hear the voices of strangers. We choose to hear the voice of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and only Him alone, and we believe that our Lord Jesus Christ is the only door to you, O Heavenly Father, King of Glory. We continue to accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and personal Savior now and forevermore. Ancient of days, please come and take total control of this environment, O Lord God, for in Jesus' mighty name of Nazareth, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. Let me read. Ephesians 6, 10 to 18. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that he may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that he may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins geared about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith he shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. 17. And take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all sins. The first armor we are going to talk about is the belt of truth. Question. How can we as believers stand firm in spiritual warfare using the belt of truth? In other words, how can we in our marriages, with our children, at our job sites, with our colleagues, to be more specific, with our neighbors at home, stand firm using the belt of truth. We know the belt of truth is the armor that holds the breastplate of righteousness. It is also the armor that holds the, the sword of the spirit, right? And it is the sword of the spirit that we use as an offensive weapon against the enemy. What is truth? We need to know that as children of God, there is only one truth. There is nothing like your truth, my truth, or truth based on culture. John 
17, 17 says, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. The word of God is truth. And as Christians, we need to live a life of truth. We need to live a life of integrity, meaning we have to stand by the truth irrespective of this of the circumstances or the consequences so we are also being called to to get our loins or our loins get about what does that mean this means we have to be ready when we have to be ready be watchful each time we are being asked the reason for the hope of our calling right we need to be ready to give an answer each time we are being faced with a, with, um, with, with a circumstance, right? We need to be able to stand by the truth and only the truth alone. So, to give our loins means we have to be ready. It is only when we are grounded in the word of God that we can live a life of honesty and integrity. Ephesians 4, 25 to 27 says, Wherefore, putting away lying, speaking every man truth with his neighbor. For we are members one of another. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. So as children of God, do you speak in truth with your neighbors, with your friends? In church, the truth hurts, but it must be spoken. We need to take away any form of dishonesty, lies telling, hypocrisy, because that is not, we are not representing God if we are hypocrites, if we lie. Psalms 32 verses 2 to 5 says, Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputed not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guile. When I kept silence, my bones waxed old. Through my roaring all the day long, for day and night thy hand was heavy upon me. My moisture is turned into the drought of summer. Selah. I acknowledged my sin unto thee, and my iniquity have I not hid. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgivest the iniquity of my sin, Selah. So this is David, right? It shows how when you hide your sins, right? There is, you suffer much punishment. Remember, you can fool human beings, but you can't fool God. You can fool human beings for a while, because this, the truth will always be revealed. It can take even 10 years, but the truth will always be revealed. And when David confessed his, confessed his sins, God forgave him and he blessed him even more. Of God is a God who disciplines us. He disciplines us because he loves us. Praise God. So living a life of integrity is very, very important in our spiritual work and in, in, in embarking the enemies. You can deceive people, but you can't deceive the enemy because the enemy, remember, he is the accuser of brethren. Once you lie, he is there accusing you. You have given him a legal ground to afflict you. You have given him a foothold in your lies, in your life. And when you start with lies telling, if you don't stop, if you don't confess your sins, one lie beget another lie. So you, you always have to lie to cover the first lie, putting yourself in bondage which is not really necessary. My brethren, always stand by the truth. The truth will set you free. The truth is the easiest part. It is not easy, but it is the easiest part if you look at it. Remember when you start with lies, you have to, it is work, right? You have to, you always have to, to, to hide the same lies. You always have to hide the same lies. You should be ready each and every time somebody asks you something, the truth. Always say the truth and your life will be easy. And people will be wondering, but what type of child is this? This is how God portrays his light in us. Praise God. Practical question. 
How can Satan attack us children of God when we are not guided with the belt with the belt of truth? Or how can Satan attack truth in the world of today? Remember, there is nothing like your truth, my truth. The word of God is truth. Jesus Christ is truth. We need to be grounded in the word of God in order for us to live a life of integrity. Nowadays, an example, nowadays fornication has become normal, right? Fornication, another way, word for fornication is dating. Gay marriages has become the norm. Abortion is the norm. And what still, the, there is the saying that um, all religions, they serve the same God. That's, that's a lie. We shouldn't believe in that because if you're grounded with the word of God, you should know somebody is lying somewhere. I take an example. If my mother, whom I, I love so much, right? I'm using my mother because I really do love this woman. So if she is a Muslim and I am a Christian, of course I do love my mom. But the reality is we do not serve the same God. That is the truth. But does it prevent me from loving my mom? No. I continue to love my mom. But her religion I cannot accept. So that is the truth and that is the line we shouldn't cross. And we should not accept these lies or just to, to please the other person. These are the snares in which the enemy uses to, to get a foothold in our life to afflict us. We always need to stand by the truth. My brother, I love you so much, but we do not serve the same God. Right? And there is no point of agreement between us. Um, in 1 Timothy 4 verse 1, Paul talks about doctrines of demons. That's another example. It says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So you see how if you are not grounded with the truth, as a child of God, you will be swayed to and fro, left and right, front and back with all manners of doctrines, the more reason we need to be grounded with the word of God, which is truth. Saints, if you do not know the word of God, then you are not prepared to stand firm in spiritual battle. Ephesians 4, 11 to 14 talks about God giving the church pastors, teachers, evangelists, right? Apostles, in order for them to teach the, the church on his word. Because if this is not being done, all manner of, manners of doctrine will infiltrate the church. Right? And they will be defeated by this manner of doctrine. But if you know the word of God, the enemy cannot defeat you. The enemy will be scared of you. Praise God. Let me read Ephesians 4, 11 to 14. It says, and he gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors, and teachers, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith, and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. 14. That we henceforth, being no more children, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. If you look at the church structure today, we mostly have pastors, right? All these five ministerial gifts are lacking. And most of the times these pastors don't also want to, they are not open to the other ministerial gifts. For example, if I'm a pastor, right, I'm not open to the prophetic gifts, 
to the apostolic gifts, to the evangelist gifts, there is a problem in church because I, as a, as a pastor, I cannot fulfill all of these posts. It is not possible, right? The church is a body full of different parts which we need one another. We need to be united. We need teamwork. It is only through teamwork that we can move forward. Remember when you talk about teamwork, teamwork has to do with truth, right? It has to do, the basis of teamwork has to do with truth. And if it is not true, if it's not based on truth, then it, that, it leads to destruction, hypocrisy, right? And the fruit of this hypocrisy is evil. So, and if you are being blessed, there are, past, there are, there are people, there are Christians who are being blessed with the gifts of, um, of prophets, right? But you see these people, they leave their, they leave their gifts and they also want, they just want to be a pastor. And you see them, they go and create another church. Or, they, or Jesus Christ is a church. They go and create another group, right? We shouldn't be like this. We need to all come together rather than each person going to create different, different ministries. We need to all come together and benefit from each and other. God has different faces. God has taught you in a different way, has taught me in a different way. We need to put it together in order for us to move forward. Teamwork is the key. And without that, there means there are things that are lacking, right? The ministry of a prophet is lacking to direct, to, to correct, to, 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 to warn us. It is lacking. That means we can, be, we can work. If you don't have vision, you, are, you perish. Yeah, the, 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 the gift of an evangelist is, is very important to bring souls, to win souls, like, right, for us to educate them, right? So you see how the church is lacking, and that is why you see people toast to and fro. The enemy is tossing us to and fro, and of which we are the ones supposed to be tossing the enemy. The enemy has to flee from us. An application question to you, as well as to me. In what ways have you seen dishonesty affect your life or the life of someone else? In what way have you been dishonest and this had a repercussion in your life? So this is a question to you. Please meditatively answer it and analyze the effect it had in your life. And also analyze the fact that had it been you were not dishonest, what would have been the the consequences. Again, we children of God, we should not look at the temporal um, inconveniences that will come as a result of us standing, standing in the truth, right? When we are truthful, we have a life of integrity. The enemy doesn't like that. So he will attack us, but then we need to stand firm in truth. To conclude, believers stand firm in spiritual warfare using the belt of truth. By knowing that the word of God is truth, Jesus Christ is the truth, and that as children of God, we need to live a life of honesty and integrity. We, do not need, we don't have to live a life of dishonesty, hypocrisy, lies telling, because if we live a life of dishonesty, hypocrisy, the enemy has legal rights to afflict us. We can only live a life of integrity and honesty if we are grounded with the word of God. The word of God is our truth. There is no your truth, my truth, truth based on culture or race, right? The truth remains the truth. Jesus Christ is the same everywhere, yesterday, today, and forevermore. Praise God.